Welcome back. 424, Andy Parks live from the Federation for American Immigration Reforms. Hold their feet to the fire broadcast for 2012. We're live on Capitol Hill this afternoon. And my next guest is Bob Vandervoort. Bob is the executive director for Pro English. Bob, good afternoon. How are you? Great, Andy. Thanks for having me. Uh, my pleasure. Tell me what Pro English is. Well, Pro English has been around since 1994. We're an organization that works at the state, local, and federal level to make English the official language for government. And we have been uh, quite successful in getting laws passed to do just that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it used to drive me crazy when I would go like to an airport or any place. Uh, MVA is a prime example in Maryland. You walk in and everything is in Spanish before you even hear it or see it sure, <laughs> in sure. English. Uh, you guys working to correct that situation? Well, already? we sure are. And one of our goals is to challenge the use of bul- multilingual and bilingual ballots. Uh, we feel these are unnecessary, they're, they're a waste of taxpayer money, and they can contribute to election fraud. I thought it was a law that you had to have English ballots. Well, you have to have English ballots, but we are challenging the use of translating those ballots into multiple languages. I got you. Mm-hmm. I got you. Mm-hmm. Um, it, let, let's talk about our current president and his view on English and uh, assimilation issues versus what Mitt Romney might do. Mm-hmm. Have you discussed that? Have you have you investigated uh, maybe the Romney campaign as to their leanings on uh, that issue? We certainly have. In fact, if your listeners check out our website, proenglish.org, you can see how we've ranked the candidates and where they stand on this issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, President Obama, unfortunately, takes a very bad uh, opinion and position on the issue of official English. However, fortunately, in this election cycle, all of the major Republican candidates actually came out for official English. And Romney, when he was governor of Massachusetts, actually worked to get rid of bilingual education, mm-hmm. which holds actually holds kids back. It doesn't teach them English. Yeah. And they got rid of it, and they've gone to English immersion, and kids who go through English immersion just flourish and learn the language. Yeah. You know, it was interesting. I was talking to someone not long ago, and I believe they were from San Diego. They were talking about California in general, though, how now we have three and four generations of Mexicans who have come to the country and don't know English. Mm. You know, I mean, the kids never have, you know, they have no use for it. Right. Because they're allowed to communicate in their native language mm-hmm. here in America with just about everything they want. Mm-hmm. By forcing the hand, wouldn't that make for a better society? Wouldn't it make for a better workforce? Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it help them get ahead in life? Oh, 100%. I mean, that's that's one of the problems with the language issue. It's starting to fracture us and balkanize us. People are being divided on linguistic lines. Mm-hmm. And if you look around the world, you can see that plenty of countries are, you know, are divided over issues of language. Yeah. We, we need to prevent that from happening. Puerto Rico, uh, primary, not long ago. Mm-hmm. And it made some headlines because of the language. Mm-hmm. And it rubbed some people the wrong way. Your thoughts on that whole situation, because obviously that's a huge Spanish population right. and, uh, I mean, well, uh, Spanish language uh, population. Um, but should they have to learn English as well? Well, it's, it's a complicated issue in Puerto Rico, and it's a, I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, our position is that if, if Puerto Rico wants to be a state, they have to make English their official primary language. Now, what they will tell you in Puerto Rico is we have both English and Spanish as official languages, but it's not the primary official language. It's not the language spoken mm-hmm. in the schools. It's not the language used in government. And when Rick Santorum went down there, he actually kind of stirred up a hornet's nest yeah. by raising that as an issue. And, and frankly, we say, you know, good for him for doing yeah. that. Yeah, if you want to be, if you want to become the 51st state, guess what? <laughs> right. And that's that's really not unusual. Other territories before they became states, the Congress required that they have to have English as their official language. This happened mm-hmm. with Louisiana, and this happened in Arizona, and other states that had large populations of non-English speakers. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm just about out of time here, but I wanted to uh, make sure we know how people can get in touch with your organization and how they can follow what you guys are doing. The best way they can stay current on this issue is to check out our website. It's proenglish.org. And if they want, they can sign up for emails. We send out uh, periodic email alerts, giving them even more information. Okay. Bob, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Appreciate it very much. Andy, thanks for having me. Bob Vandervoort, the Director of Government Rela- I'm sorry, the Executive Director of Pro English. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, stay tuned. A lot more to come. It's Andy Parks live from the... 
Federation for American Immigration Reforms hold their feet to the fire broadcast for 2012.